everybody. My name is Frances Castetta Dice, and I am president of the Houston Easton Chamber of Commerce. And it's an honor to welcome you to our Feel Good Friday. Uh, today, we're going to learn a little bit about history. Uh, as you know, the East End is uh, the birthplace of Houston, so there's a lot of history, a lot of great stories. And the building at 5401 Harrisburg Boulevard has a long history uh, that traced back to when the Saberack family owned it. And, and today, we're honored to have Louis Saberack to join us to give us some history about it. But then we also have John and Veronica Avila, who are East End natives and barbecue, beautiful barbecue couple. And they are going to be opening El Burro and the Bull restaurant at that location coming soon. So together, all of us are going to talk about the history and then talk about the delicious future that's about to happen. So welcome, you guys, and thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, the, and then this is the picture, 5401. Um, Harrisburg. Lewis, uh, can you tell us when your family owned this, what year th uh, that was? Well, the original uh, time when the Sabrak owned it, I can't tell you the original year, but it was in the 1920s. Uh, the original owner that I knew was uh, Henry Sabrak, who was actually my grandfather's brother. Um, he ran it as a service station. Um, it was, this was the, uh, Harrisburg was the beginning of the road to Galveston. So you went down Harrisburg, you crossed the ship channel bridge down there at where it intersected navigation. And then you got on highway three and you went from there down highway three to Galveston, either that, or you took the train. Um, so he, in his front, in his service station had baskets full of fishing poles and things that you could take to Galveston. Wow. My dad started working for him. My dad moved to 4623 Harrisburg to his own uh, station, uh, which um, became the basis for a business that we had at 5401 later. Um, my my um, grandfather, uncle, I'm not sure how you describe uh, that, but Henry uh, changed his service station to Henry Sporting Goods. And I can remember um, when I was probably six to eight years old, my mother going down there and buying thermos bottles to put coffee in and buying the uh, metal sided ice chest to go to Lawndale Park where we went to swim out on Sheldon Road. Wow. And Henry rented shotguns, he rented fishing tackle, uh, and he had a full-blown sporting goods store in the old building, which is only half, which is the building on the corner that you're looking at. And obviously it didn't look anything like this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I it, bet. Was a, it was a white stucco building with a um, elliptical roof, kind of a, not even a half circle, but kind of like a eighth of a circle roof, a round roof. <clears throat> and next door to it, where the smaller building is, that smaller entrance over there, uh, we put a metallic building there. But before that, there was a little um, wooden deal with three businesses in it, one of which was a place where I got my first haircut. <laughs> uh, the, uh, in 1950, uh, my Henry Sabrak had passed away. Uh, the property was then owned by Eastwood Bank. My dad was able to buy it from Eastwood Bank, and we moved Sabrak Battery Service from the service station down on the corner to this building. This that allowed my dad to expand what he was doing. The little side building, uh, there was literally a tree in the back. And we used to say that my dad was a real shade tree mechanic because <laughs> there was the only place big enough to pull up a big truck. You couldn't pull one into the front underneath the roof that was there. So he ran it uh, all during the 50s, 60s, uh, 70s. Uh, at the end of, uh, in 1979, I left Xerox Carp after 10 years. And, and I became a salesman for Sabrak Battery Associates. And my, my mother and father retired about two years later. And my brother and I ran the company until the 90s as an industrial battery company. 
We had batteries for forklifts. We had batteries for backup systems. We put, put them in the buildings like on San Philippi, upstairs on the 50th floor and all this stuff. We sold automotive batteries. We were, we were about a $3 million company. Wow, uh, that's incredible, Lewis. We, uh, in, the 19, in the 1990s, about 92, um, I went off and opened my own business, uh, Sabrak Power Systems in a different location out close to the airport. My brother sold the business kept the property and eventually the guy that he sold the business to uh, moved out of the property. Uh, and so then my dad and my brother, so my brother moved off to New York city, not New York city, but upstate New York. And who knows why anybody would want to go up there. But anyway, <laughs> he wound up selling the property because he was up there and obviously wasn't, couldn't do anything with it down here. The, when the bank built it, and, and inside of this is the old building. And it, and it really, it really blows my mind that it's in there because you can't tell it from the outside. I don't know if the metallic building is still there or not. You, you're, you, you guys are gonna run your business there, you probably know or not know, but uh, if you look at where the drive-through is in the back, that used to be a driveway where we would pull up bigger trucks and go in the back of the metallic building. And we built, there was a house on a lot between there and the, what had been the railroad tracks, which is now this walking area that, you know, goes all the way downtown. Well, we, we paved that, we paved that lot back there. So we had, we had additional parking. And I guess that was probably part of the, you know, the sale. So, um, uh, my brother, my whole family, we grew up, uh, in the East End. Um, we ran this, we, you know, my dad made a, his business out of there. The original, uh, place that my dad started business, the, the Texaco station down the street next door to Capriva Body Works, um, was kind of the, where, where we grew up. Which, which Capriva Body Works is still there to this day, as a matter of fact, and it's a beautiful building and they've done a lot to kind of keep it, that old school look to it, even with some uh, refurbished old gas pumps, which is really cool for the neighborhood, without a doubt. Um, we've, you know, we've, in, in doing the construction on the building, we've learned that there definitely was a building inside of the building. Um, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Is that, oh, that's Capriva. Oh yeah, the Texas that's, station. That Capriva owns it now. Right. That drawing was done of Sabrak battery service. Okay. Can you okay, show it gotcha. one more time, Lewis? Yeah. Can you show us one more time? Sure. This that really looks like it's not exactly, but it's really close to what it. Yeah. Looks. Oh yeah, that's so what was I a mean. Texaco station, and I bet it was right. full service. Oh, I bet. I, it was. As a matter of fact, you could drive up and you would, and we would go out, the bell would ring, we'd go out there and you'd say, give me a dollar's worth of gas. And we'd put the <laughs> gas at about 19 cents a gallon and we would check your tires, raise the hood, put water in, check your battery and wash wow. it. And, uh, and then they'd say, give me a dollar's worth. And that was, that was something I did at 12 years old. Wow. Yeah. My dad started that way, you know, way back, way back when. He had a, at one time, he had 14 guys working in that place rebuilding batter, uh, generators and starters. And uh, he would have to get the uh, green paint from Texaco to keep the outside looking like a Texaco station because it was much more than that on the inside. And <laughs> I didn't always like it. But he did, uh, he did all changes, tune ups. His main deal was so uh, he would actually rent you a battery. <laughs> I had a guy that I that I met later, in fact, just ten years ago, uh, and he said, "I owe your dad two dollars and fifty cents." I said, "What?" He said, "Oh yeah." He said, "When I was a teenager, I rented a battery from him, and I didn't have the money to pay him back the the rent, so I put it back on his doorstep on a Sunday." He said, later on, I became a driver for Texaco, and I would deliver gas to that station. 
He said, I drove up there and he said, your dad looked at me the first time and said, you owe me $2.50. <laughs> Ran on that battery. I love this story. Well, I know that the Avilas, we're going to tell your beautiful story, but in that same building, I heard that from 2007 to 2011, there was a bank um, and it was Banco Herencia. It was a branch of Wallace State Bank. And so they were in that building and then they relocated after 2011. And we don't know, uh, you, John, you may know more, but, but before we go more history, can you talk about you two? Uh, and I know we've got a uh, uh, history uh, about your restaurant that's coming to the area, but we'd like to know a little bit about you two. Sure, thanks. Um, so this is my beautiful wife, Veronica. Uh, Veronica beautiful. Hernandez. <laughs> <laughs> Veronica Hernandez. I was fortunate enough to make her an Avila. Uh, just a few years back, and um, we uh, we both uh, lived in the East End now, just off of Navigation Boulevard, uh, right down the street from the old Ninfas, as a matter of fact. Um, I love being back in the neighborhood. Of course, I grew up uh, a little further in uh, on the Harrisburg and 75th area, um, and my grandparents, my, my grandmother graduated from Milby High School. My mother and father graduated was the first from class, Milby. Wasn't it? One of the first. Um, my grandmother was married in Our Lady of Guadalupe Church. Um, we ended up going to Immaculate Conception. So I guess our lives really were, I mean, just like most everyone from the neighborhood, your, your existence was the neighborhood, right? Like it was uh, navigation to Harrisburg to, you know, down to Jensen and then down to the ship channel, it seemed like. That's where you did all your stuff. Um, and so we're very lucky and very fortunate to be back in the neighborhood, um, to be a part of the neighborhood. And uh, we're super blessed to have gotten our hands on this building. Um, this building is incredible. And to kind of speak to what you were saying before, um, when, when we started the construction on the building, we quickly realized that there was a structure inside of the structure. And so we would tear down a wall and see old stuff. Like, you know, uh, it, it was just incredible. Uh, my wife is a, uh, Houston, University of Houston graduate with a, a architecture degree and so when she saw the ceiling she knew exactly what we were looking at and and really just fascinated by the natural beauty of the building and 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 obviously there's some age to it for sure um, there's a stair a stairwell that goes up to the mechanic mechanical area and you can just tell by the wood steps alone that this building has got some age to it. Um, and so uh, Veronica's architecture friends reached out to her when we posted photos and we quickly learned that the ceiling is- The uh, roof structure roof. is uh, called a lamella roof. Lamella roof is what it's actually called because it was designed by a man with that name. Um, we understand that the, the, this all wood structure um, comes from a period when steel was not readily available during the war. And so a lot of these uh, structures were built in, with all wood. Um, right, but not only all wood, uh, if you'll notice those members are not really much longer than six feet. And, and part of it was because of the machining of it, they could make the pieces of equal size of equal portion to be able to build this roof. So it didn't take a lot of um, labor in, in developing the ceiling. And so it, it's fascinating, it really is. And so to peel back some of the, the sheetrock and see this ceiling there and still existing and still very strong, like it's, it's such a strong ceiling and it doesn't have water damage and it's just old construction, old good solid construction. And so we're very blessed to have this uh, have come into our lives um, and it's fantastic. I mean, you can see the fireplaces, you can see the ceiling, you can see the, it's a, it's called a vaulted ceiling. Um, so you can see the arch there. Uh, it's incredible. And, and Veronica has really um, done a good job of really helping us understand the beauty of the ceiling and how lucky we are to have it in such good shape. So it's only natural that we would keep it and, uh, and not want to knock it down or not want to cover it. Um, and so we are going to keep that exposed uh, for everyone to come and see, which is a direct connection to the old, old building uh, of what Harrisburg used to look like. I see photos of Harrisburg and I'm fascinated to, I, I can almost take myself back in time and think of what it must have been like to walk down that street 
or drive down that street and see the old gas pumps and the old uh, the old delivery trucks. Um, my great grandfather used to have a furniture company built in the 1920s in Houston called Alamo Furniture. Um, its warehouse was it used to stand where the baseball stadium is today, um, but photos of his old Model A delivery trucks. Um, it's fascinating. And you can just imagine these trucks driving up Harrisburg or driving up the newly bricked navigation, uh, you know, when it was bricked, uh, bricked up so that trucks could travel better. You can just imagine that almost. Um, so it's, it's fantastic. And anyone that, anyone that knows the neighborhood and knows that part of town can quickly see that um, Harrisburg was a strong road. It was, it was very much a part of what Houston is. I mean, we, a lot of us do know that before it was called Houston, it was called Harrisburg City. Um, this street is called Harrisburg Boulevard. So imagine that. Imagine the connection between the, you know, Houston and Harrisburg City and how much of a role this road played in commerce, in travel, in uh, just spending time with your family. Like you said, you were, you, I, I didn't know that this road was a, a road to, out to Galveston, uh, but it makes total sense. Well, Absolutely makes sense. When I first moved to Houston, uh, or wh while I was studying architecture, we had a um, community resource center that I worked for, and we did a lot of uh, studies in the east, east End, and I came to find out that there was a rail that ran down Harrisburg that went straight to Galveston, which I guess would have been the railroad right behind the building. And so yeah. I, right. I can only imagine, you know, taking the train to Galveston, which you can't do today. Imagine making a day trip where you hop on the train with your family, possibly with your, with your towels and with your picnic basket and all the things that you needed for the day. Imagine hopping on a train, spending time with the family on the train, going to the beach. I, I, even when I was young in the 70s, I remember the beaches in Galveston being really large. I know that there's been some deterioration of the beaches over the, over the years, but I just remember those beaches being huge and super beautiful and super, you know, super great places for family. Um, and so uh, you can only imagine what that must have been like in the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, and so on. Um, oh, I, see, very... I see these, oh, not to interrupt, but I see these, uh, those fireplaces. Are they, do they work, John and Veronica? They do, they're gas mm -hmm. fireplaces. They do function and we've kept them so that we can, uh, the, at the bottom right, what you're looking at is a small dining room it will be open to for everyone to use, but it's also available for folks to rent out as a private dining room. It probably seats about 20 to 25 folks. Um, there will be some doors there that will be able to close. You can have your family function or your private function in that space. And it actually has a bar uh, there as well, which you can also have a private bartender if you like, um, or our bartender can just serve you out of there. Uh, but that's a really beautiful room. Uh, one of the challenges that we have right now is that we're, we are installing an elevator um, in this old building. Um, and so you can imagine uh, some of the challenges with that, but, but we're looking forward to that so we, that way we can give access to everyone. Right, with minimal impact because we had to find an elevator that would not uh, penetrate the ceiling uh, because right. we wanted to make sure to preserve every part of that. Uh, you know, once you, you cut into a barrel, barrel vault like that, you won't be able to to regain the integrity. That's great. And I hear that there's a mystery. You know, you found church pews in there and um, don't know if that was, if it was a church beforehand. But Lewis, what other uh, businesses were upstairs uh, where they're going to be moving into? Well, besides the little gambling deal that they did up there, and that was really way before my time, but <clears throat> my brother and his, and his wife lived up there for several years and I'm, I'm going to guess maybe five years. So they did some, uh, re obviously remodeling of the upstairs and I really never saw it when they were living there. Um, but they had access to the windows on the side. They could, you know, they, they put flower boxes out there and different things like that. Um, but well, the second floor, the second floor definitely has a lot of history. Um, and a lot of interesting history, like you were telling us, we, we do know that uh, when there was a gambling house on the second floor back in the day, that we do know that Lenox won the building in a, in a poker game. 
you do know that it later became Lenox Barbecue um, because he won this building in the poker game. And the so that, that was that across. was not that it wasn't this building that he right. won. It was the building across the street? Right, 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 right. But, the, but he, the, poker put, game, the poker game was on the second floor of this building. Which, right, man, imagine that. Imagine how great that must have been. I mean, there's some barbecue history for you. Definitely wow. some barbecue history and Houston yeah. barbecue history, all, all within this little 100 square, you know, yards or whatever it is that we're talking about here. And, and then you la then you told us that you thought there was a, uh, a a wrestling ring on the second floor. There, well, in the in the 80s, okay, when we were running the business downstairs and we had built the metallic building to the side and all that. There was some guys that came along, talked to my father, who was still the head honcho of Sabrak Battery Associates, even though we weren't exactly, he wasn't exactly running every day. And he had been a boxer and a wrestler in the first ward of Houston. Back in, when he was in high school, he went to Jeff Davis. Um, and then he went to A&M and he boxed it, uh, in the in the golden gloves and a lot of stuff so when they wanted to put in a boxing wrestling ring he let them wow the, the big thing that w one reason why we made a move later on besides the noise we went up there and found out that they had disconnected one of those steel cables and they did it because it ran across the ring and when you yes. went they were doing the paul bosch style uh, friday night wrestling throwing guys around and stuff like that. And uh, I'll never forget the first time I ever met him, my dad said, hey, uh, my son's been wrestling at A&M and, and uh, he'll wrestle you. And I was like, oh my God, this guy's 200 pounds, I'm 150. And uh, I said, well, I'll get in the ring with you. So, you know, what it was is it's all tricks and, and leverage and, in ballet and you can you know fall over and slam your hand against the, the floor and make it make noise and all that kind of stuff so it was kind of fun for one time i didn't do it <laughs> <laughs> wasn't interested in being being one of those guys but they they had it for about a year and a half or maybe two well it's interesting you say that because there is one cable missing from upstairs right in yeah. the middle right in the middle right in the middle where the ring was yeah. And, and that that's the only cable that isn't the original cable that's, you know, that should be there. That's, that's, that's a great story. Now we know why that cable's gone. We've wondered. One other, one other thing that where we, where we use that upstairs for a short period of time on the property, on the lot behind the building where we uh, paved it with uh, concrete uh, chips uh, made a, made a parking lot out of it. There was a reg there was a house there, and we were renting it. There was some people from El Salvador um, had come in. They were, you know, just a family. There's maybe two or three uh, guys and two or three families together, and they lived in the house back there. And right before Christmas one year, it burned down. Oh wow! It had a gas flame, and they that was about the only heat in it, and they. Uh, you know, they left the fire on anyway, the house burned down. We let them live upstairs for a real short period of time. We said, listen, you can stay up there, but there's nothing up there. There's no water, there's no bathroom and so forth. Mm -hmm. They actually lived up there and we, we had a hard time getting them to move. They kind of... <laughs> wow, wow. But, but they needed a place to stay. So that was the one, you know, and I don't know if that's what gave my brother later on and his future wife the idea of remodeling it and living up there during the week but there was a lot of space that upstairs back stairs, that back stairway you're talking about that was the only way up and the only way down so we knew when you had somebody up there that was not you know that puts you in a bad position because if anything happened you can get out and all that sort of thing. sure yeah when we when we got the building it was still built out as though it was a part an apartment and it was it's a very large space yeah um, and so it still had the restrooms, it still had the showers, it still had the, the bedroom you could see that was clearly a bedroom. Yeah, it had well, a that's all the stuff. Bedroom. That's all the stuff that my brother and his wife put up there. Interesting. And so when we tore down those walls and found those church 
pieces of the church pews there, it really made us wonder if at some point originally it had been a church. Um, and someone, someone close to us told us that grew up in the neighborhood told us that they knew there was a church in the area or church around there, but they weren't, they couldn't remember um, where exactly it was. And so it kind of makes us wonder as we started replacing the flooring on the second floor as well, our, our general contractor construction guy told us that that second floor actually was not original to the building, that someone had added it after it had been originally built. And so which you is sorry, which is interesting because we've ripped up part of the flooring and found asphalt between the first and the second floor. So which means at some point that was the roof of the building. And then someone awesome. built and someone built on top of that, which is it's again, it's such a mystery to us what exactly has happened well, with this building. Well, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that 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 had to be my uncle that did that. My my dad's my <laughs> my grandfather uncle, whatever, however you just great your great uncle. That's right. Yeah, great uncle. Uh had to have probably done that because that uh, that upstairs was there. He's the one that had it when it was a gambling thing. Uh, unless somebody put it in before he actually took over the station. But he, I know that my dad, what happened with my dad was when he came out of A&M that semester or the first year, he started in 29, but you get out in the fall, right, of, um, uh, or the spring of 30. And he worked for a couple of years driving a truck to the valley, hauling vegetables, uh, uh, hauling oil field pipe because the truck he originally had had borrowed two hundred dollars from his sister to get it. Uh, his brother went to sleep on his way to Alice and wrecked it, and blah blah blah. But the so he 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 delivered uh, oil field pipe to the fields off of uh, Highway ninety. To it with a construction company called Sonier Construction that was over there. And it's probably a historical deal about that too. But, you know, then he went to work for his uncle. And I don't know if he only worked for three years or two years, I'm not sure about that. But it was, you know, one long before he his business that he was working was building up. And he would say, Henry sitting across the street eating, drinking coffee at the cafe, watching me work. I wanted part of the business. He said no, so I moved when the street and start, you know, that's how people were. Well, you know, the neighborhood, it sounds like your family has had a long history clearly on Harrisburg Boulevard, which is such an important part of Houston. And, you know, I think subconsciously that's been one of my goals always growing up was to you know I've, I've lived in New York I've built restaurants in New York I've done a little bit of restaurant work in London um, in Los Angeles as well and I never went to these places thinking I would stay there I always went to these places knowing that I would come back to where I was born and raised and that's that's the East End um, and so I always tried to look at everything as a learning as, as an opportunity to learn and then bring it back home to do it for myself um, we've been very lucky to, to be back in the East End and, and to really see the neighborhood growing. And I feel like it's growing in a really positive direction. You know, we, we are the grandchildren and the great grandchildren of the people that lived in these neighborhoods a long time ago. And I think some folks might, might think that it's uh, only gentrification and that outsiders are coming in, but we've grown up and we've done well for ourselves. And now we want to come back home and and contribute to the neighborhood. And that's really what this building means to us. Um, it means that we're coming back home. These are family businesses just like they were for you. Um, my brother, Christian Avila, and his wife, Jennifer Avila, are now partners with us in our businesses. And, and that's great dynamic for us. My sister's brother, Jesse Gallegos, is uh, one of our chefs. And so it's a family business. We have um, one of her nephews came to work for us for the summer. Um, my nephew is working for us right now as well. So it, it's it's really a good opportunity for us to do these things that make us feel good and make a living at it. Um, this building is a big part of it. And El Burro and the Bull, um, it, we hope that people feel welcome to come into our doors and we hope that they see these, this building and really want to know more about it. We, of course, would love to to maybe if you have photos that you might like to share uh, of 
back when the businesses were open or even the one you just showed us, we'd love to hang these photos in the hallway once you get off the elevator because we'd like for people to get off the elevator and almost take a tour down the hallway where they're looking at what this building used to look like, what Harrisburg used to look like, um, what the people back then used to look like. Um, and that, that's a big part of what we'd like to do. Um, the first floor is going to be El Burro because the name of the company, the name of the brand is El Burro and the Bull. Uh, the first floor is going to be El Burro, which is a little more casual of a setting, um, really focused on the Mexican food part of our brand. Um, and then once you get to the second floor through the elevator, you're going to see um, a slightly elevated menu. Um, it, the easiest way for me to explain it is that downstairs is going to be margaritas and micheladas and the second floor is going to be bourbon and wine. That kind of gives you an idea of what, what, what we're talking about. And so we really want a place where folks can come on in, grab something quick, have a few beers, hang out with their buddies, um, you know, have a good time and, and then, you know, enjoy themselves. But we also want to create an atmosphere where you come to celebrate graduations, uh, anniversaries, uh, wedding parties, wedding dinners. We really want to have a broad spectrum. Houston is one of the most diverse, probably the most diverse city I've ever lived in. Um, not only culturally and racially, but economically, um, you know, it's just a great, great city. And so we want to be, we want to offer a diverse menu, uh, a diverse approach to the business and, uh, and diverse experiences, to be honest with you. Um, we really look forward to. So when are you going to open? Because that's the big question. Everybody sure, wants to know. Sure. So we were, we were planning on opening this fall, of course, because of the COVID-19 uh, thing that we got going on now. We, we have pushed it back to February of 2021. Um, but we do want it to be at a time when people are really comfortable with coming to see us. Uh, we want folks to maybe use us as the, as the opportunity to celebrate with their families for the first time in a long time. Um, and, and so we're, we're, we're gauging it as we go along. Construction continues. Um, the, the restaurant will be ready in a few months, uh, but the opening of it itself will, will really be tentative and, and based on when Houston is ready for us. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've waited a long time to have our, our footings in the East End um, business-wise. And I think that for us to wait a few more months till everyone is comfortable is really uh, no sweat off our back. We, we would prefer to open at the most ideal time. It's, um, it's a, <laughs> we get one shot at this. So it's really important that uh, we do it right. Well, I, I think it's beautiful. I, I will tell you as a, con as a consumer, I will tell you one thing. The first um, place that my wife and I went to eat as soon as they opened 25% was Fajita Willie's. Uh, the second place was Los Tios on Memorial Drive. Um, we're French. We eat hamburgers. We eat steaks. But Mexican food is top of the line. <laughs> you can uh, also just just so you know, a full disclosure. Uh, one of my roommates in college was Harris Pappas of Pappas Restaurants. Um, I am sure because his his dad, their company, original Pappas Refrigeration was on Cullen, uh, right at Wayside. Uh, his first restaurant was the one on San Jacinto, and the second one was at Woodridge, right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. The barbecue place. That was his second place. The brisket house. The brisket house. It, it, yeah. Now they've switched it and they call it Papa's Barbecue, but it was a brisket house. And and so, um, you know, there. I mean, those guys. You know, they didn't start out and they lived over in uh, they lo lived over in Hunters Creek because they sold these great big walk-in coolers to grocery stores and everybody else. But his uncle built the first couple of restaurants. He came out of uh, the Army A&M, had a job to be an accountant, started uh, serving uh, barbecue at the place over there on San Jacinto and never left. So the restaurant business is where it's at. It's still where it's at. 
Houston's, as you already know, has got more restaurants probably than any place and more diverse restaurants. And, uh, and I'll tell you what, um, I don't know about my wife, but I know for sure because she has a hard time with stairs and things. But we'll, we'll be, if we're still there in February, we'll be there. We'll come see Look you. Look forward to it. Well, you know, listen, I used to, I, in the 70s when I was a salesman for Xerox, we tried every new restaurant. They were opening up like, you know, hotcakes. And we'd just go wherever it was. So we, we love, and, and the whole city's this way. And my kids are this way. And, um, you know, so just all I can say is welcome to Houston, welcome to the East End. And I'm Thank so you. glad. When I was a little kid, I used to have that vision in my mind. This area right here has trees. They're building suburbs out there on cotton fields where there's no trees. Why are they not upgrading the neighborhoods where they have trees? Right. They started upgrading the houses over on McKinney uh, and in the area, and then the neighborhood over close to Forest Park where uh, Lawndale and Wayside cross, that neighborhood over there. Uh, you know, it, it was great. Um, we, we moved back there because of schools and whatever. We started in Sharpstown. There was nothing out there. <laughs> My wife said, I'll never buy another house where there's open land behind me anywhere around Houston. You never know what they'll stick out there. But to see this property uh, survive and change and become something great, like you guys are going to make it, um, you know, it just uh, warms my, your heart. My heart beat faster and feel good. And I just well, thank you so much for the encouragement. We sure do appreciate it. And it means a lot to us to make sure that, you know, we, we are welcome in the neighborhood and that everyone is welcome in our doors for sure. And while we're at it, shout out to the original brisket house. I'm sure all the East Enders remember that place. It was such a great place, right? Like shout out to the original brisket house for sure. Um, yeah. And then I've got a question for you and, and John and Veronica. We're, we're, we cannot wait for you to open, and we know you're going to open it uh, when it's right. But where can we taste your food now uh, until it opens? Can you tell us about, about where you're at right now? Sure. Um, so we have a general store in the historic Sixth Ward neighborhood called Henderson and Kane General Store. Uh, Kane is spelled K-A-N-E. So Henderson and Kane General Store. The address to that is 715 Henderson Street. The zip code is 77007. We're just at the other edge, on the other side of downtown, right at the edge, um, close to Houston Avenue. So just uh, maybe uh, two or three miles, as a matter of fact, from like the original Mean Pugs, not far at all. Um, and here you can get the same barbecue. Um, we have over 60 local vendors in the shop. Uh, so when you spend your time and your money with us, it, it, that goes directly to folks here in Houston who are making products um, with their families. We have, um, we have farmers who their children will come in and deliver to us the, the pickles that they made, the, the, the fresh salsas that they made. We have a local goat farmer who brings us an excellent goat's cheese. I mean, the list goes on and on of all the local stuff we have. And we take a lot of pride in, in carrying Texas made products made by folks here in Texas. Um, and uh, we sure hope to share it with a lot of folks for sure. Um, and, 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 and you have brunch uh, uh, also. We, I'm, I'm a big right. uh, fan of everything. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. The barbecue menu starts every day at 11 o'clock. We start our breakfast tacos, which you build your own breakfast tacos. You can add brisket to the breakfast tacos, smoked pork to the breakfast tacos. I mean, heck, if you want a rib on your taco, I guess we'll put one on there. For <laughs> yeah, that's up to you. Um, but, but we, we open at nine o'clock for breakfast tacos, a few breakfast items. Barbecue starts every day at 11. And on Saturdays and Sundays, as Francis was saying, we do brunch, a few brunch items. Uh, we have a brisket eggs Benedict. Um, we do um, mimosas with mango or orange juice. Um, we have the ability to sell uh, beer and wine here and you're welcome to drink beer and wine here. We never have a corking fee for, for the bottles of wine. Always welcome to come and hang out. Um, we do have limited seating outside in our cafe tables at the moment, um, but everything's also ready and set to go. Um, let us know if we can do anything for you. We do have a lot of caterings going on for, for families um, or just dinners for families. We do steak night on Monday, taco Tuesday, 
Uh, we do a burger night on Thursdays. Uh, we try to keep it moving and pumping over here. So please come and see And we have a very us. active Facebook and Instagram page. So if you're not uh, uh, following Henderson and Kane, uh, their Facebook page, please do so because these specials, they the, the pictures they make your mouth my, my mouth is watering right now just just <laughs> hearing all, all of that but 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 I uh, appreciate um, you know again uh, family owned businesses are 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 so important especially in this neighborhood and right now during COVID a lot of them are are, are suffering and seeing some changes so this is a, a perfect time for us to continue to support businesses like yourself so that more uh, uh, dreams can come true and we can in ten and fifteen years from now we can share more stories and build upon it. Um, but what I also like is that in addition to the vendors, uh, well, the vendors that you have there, you even have a, like a little store. You have like items for dogs, jewelry, um, honey that, that's made local. I, I, it's going, in, in my opinion, into a pastime because I see your Dr. Pepper sign in the back and it does feel like an old time store uh, going in there. So um, if you haven't uh, visited Henderson and Kane in the sixth ward, please do so. And then, of course, they're going to move over into the East End in the Second Ward area. The, but, uh, the uh, painting directly behind us, sorry to interrupt you, the, the painting directly behind us was painted on the glass windows for this building, and it was preserved for a number of years. And so we were fortunate enough to have it preserved in this frame, and that, that painting is original to this building here in Henderson and Kane. That's so wonderful. Wow. And so in, in closing, um, um, I just wanted to uh, start with you, uh, Lewis, if you wanted to, to close with any kind of uh, other words of, of encouragement, advice, and, and any kind of little short story about your time here in the East End. Well, the only, the only thing I can tell you is uh, Houston was the place that I wanted to come uh, back to uh, when I came out of the Army. Um, uh, it was booming. It was take, it was taking off like a rocket ship. NASA was just starting. Um, my brother actually worked for him, uh, was a U of H math major graduate, worked, for, worked at NASA before he got in the battery business, which is probably the biggest mistake he ever made. But anyway, the, uh, the Pappas has started from scratch. You guys started from scratch with the little backing that you've already built up with your working career. Uh, Sabrak Battery started with nothing. Um, and um, a lot of things did. We had Humble Oil. We had Cameron Iron Works on Milby at Harrisburg. Stewart and Stevenson on Harrisburg and downtown. Um, we had Reed Rockbit. We had Hughes Tool. All of those companies in the East End, Slumbershay, um, a guy uh, that I that I went to Sunday school with, uh, with a degree from uh, a, in atomic something or another, uh, was became the head engineer of Schlumberger's engineering group there, and graduated. To, they took him to to uh, France, and after working in France, he said, "Oh God, give me back the United States," and so they gave him a company in California to run, but. He came back to Texas um, with his wife. And so all I can tell you is you're, you're doing the thing in the spirit of Houston and the spirit of Texas. And um, listen, let me tell you, there's only one way up and that's, and that's where you're going. So uh, thank you. congratulations on what you've done already. And uh, you know, the future is wide open. You're, you're gonna you're gonna do great right there and I'm so glad because uh, you know I follow the East End on the on the this Facebook page called the East I was in the East End win and I can't tell you how many people say well what was here what was there there's pictures yeah. all the movie theaters the high schools Milby and Austin um, all the elementaries and junior highs and people still love the East End and uh, so you're in the right place at the right time. Doing Thank it. you so much. Thank you Thank for your kind you. words. And then John and Veronica, uh, would you like to ha have some closing words? Sure. Um, I, we definitely want to thank every single person that has that from the East End. Um, whether you know it or not, um, you, you've created an environment that makes us feel like we can do this. And it's been generational. So it's, it's, uh, it's, 
you know, we are, like I said before, the grandchildren and the great grandchildren of people that, that lived in the East End and helped build the East End generations ago. It means a lot to us. It only is possible with the support of folks like yourselves and, and we can't thank you enough. We hope that everyone stays strong and we hope that everyone uh, stays positive. Um, we look forward to serving you because that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be serving you and that's what we're gonna be there for. Um, we hope to see your family smiling faces um, uh, when we open our doors. That, that means a lot to us. Um, and I, I just can't say thank you enough to all of the people from the East End and the East End itself. Thank you to Harrisburg Boulevard. Thank you to all the history that's gone into the place. Um, you, you give us the courage to do these things and to take these risks. And um, we know it's gonna be okay for everyone soon. So please uh, keep your chin up. Um, know that you can call on us for anything you need and we're gonna help however we can. Um, and real quick, I wanna say, um, uh, send our condolences to the family at El Jardin um, for their loss recently. Um, it, it's one of our favorite places and it means a lot. And it's one of those places that um, it really makes the neighborhood what it is. Um, we feel we feel you and we love you all and we thank you very much. Beautifully said uh, to the family, the Gonzalez family. Yes, thank you. Veronica, anything you want to add? Um, no, I, well, just one thing. Thank you so much, Francis, for making the connection with Liz. We have had so many questions about the building, and I think we got so many more than we ever imagined uh, today, so that was really awesome. You're welcome, and we both look forward to that invitation to the grand opening, and if you need a taste tester, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Wonderful. Got it. Well, thank you all both so very much for joining us today. Um, this will be on our website for anyone else to, to share. Uh, so if anybody didn't, is out there watching this and want someone else to watch it, go to our website uh, later on today or tomorrow and it'll be up there. Um, make sure that you follow us on our East End Strong Facebook group page and let us know of other businesses like uh, El Boro and the Bull that we can help support here in the East End and welcome them. Um, so thank you guys very much. We will see What's you guys. What's the title of your Facebook page? East, East End Strong. East End Strong. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yay. Thank All you. All right. Thank you all. Have a great I'm weekend. I'm going to meet you guys. I want to, uh, I want to shake your hand and <laughs> yeah. Okay. Awesome. We look forward to it. We'll make it all happen. Right. Thank all you. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you.